When it comes to painting kitchen cupboards, one of the first things you'll need to do is remove the doors. This way you'll be able to paint all edges of the doors and cabinet. Now you will need to prep the surface. You may need to wash off first, then a good sand will be required. And remember to cover the contents of the cupboard with old towels or sheets to keep the dust out. Any areas that need filling should be filled before you sand. When sanding the doors, it's best to do the outside where possible, just to keep the dust to a minimum in the house. Now you have to dust off the surface. After dusting off, it's best if you use a rag with some mineral turps on it and wipe over the surface. This will remove any remaining dust. It works similar to using a tack cloth. Remember to sweep or vacuum out the area. Uh, using a vacuum cleaner is better as it creates less dust. When the surface is clean, then go around and mask any areas that need to be masked. Remember to do a nice neat job with your masking. I leave the masking until now for two reasons. One is that during sanding there is a chance of damaging the tape and the other is that dust can often stick to the plastic and be a little bit hard to remove. So it's nice to have it dust free. Make sure you mask any adjacent wall areas that are not going to be painted. In this particular room I'll be painting the walls when I've completed the cupboards. Now that the masking has been done, it's time to start spraying. I'm using an oil based undercoat and I normally like to start painting on hidden areas first, just to get a feel for the paint I'm spraying with. Make any final adjustments to the spray pressure or tip size then continue spraying the entire surface. For spraying the doors, I have made a makeshift spray booth out of a room that I will be painting later. It's best to have a dust free environment when spraying the doors. I'm using two trestles and a plank as a workbench. I have covered the plank with plastic and I'm using two pieces of wood to rest the doors on. This way I can easily pick up the doors and move them around. When spraying the doors, you will need somewhere to place them to let them dry. If it's a nice day, you can put them outside. But I would only suggest doing this for the undercoat. When the undercoat has dried, you can do any additional filling that may be required. Just remember to touch up those areas with some undercoat. Once dry, you will need to lightly sand all surfaces. Once sanded, you'll need to dust off and wipe over with a tack cloth or a rag with turps as described earlier and make sure the surrounding floor area is clean. Now you are ready to apply the second coat. When spraying doors for second and final coats, it's a good idea to have somewhere dust free to leave them. Once your second coat has dried, all that should be required is a light sand with a sanding sponge then dust off as before. When applying a final coat, make sure you check for any misses. Being a second coat of the same colour, sometimes the misses don't stand out, so you need to look for them. And hopefully you'll end up with a great finish.